Oh my. What? What happened?
Wow. Frank? Joe! Oh. Please. Need water. What are you... Please! I'll get you some water. Hang in there. Here you go, Frank. Oh, thank you. I don't understand. What are you doing here? Where are we? I'm not sure. I had no time. I pushed it as far as it'd go. But from what I've been reading, everything gets imprecise the farther you travel. Even your physical location can get messed up. Nobody's been this far. We could be hundreds, maybe thousands of years in the future for all I know. I don't get it. So you're a, a time pilot now? Do I really need to spell it out for you, Joe? I stole it. What? You stole the time machine, but, but why? Look, I've got no reason to tell you, but I guess it doesn't matter. You're the last person I'll be sharing anything with anyway. The truth is, I'm a Soviet agent. Cut it out, Frank. I'm not falling for that one again. I'm not joking. Frank, you're just sick. Confused. Come on. You can't be. Where's your Russian accent? Joe, I'm an undercover agent deployed by the Kremlin. My job is to fit in. How far do you think I'd get if I went around calling everyone comrade? Uh... My real name is Yuri Barishev. I came to America in my early 20s. I went to school here, worked here, spent nearly 10 years building the foundation of an ordinary life. But the truth is that my life is far from ordinary. I am a spy. I was planted by the Soviet Foreign Intelligence Agency to gather intel on advanced U.S. military research programs. And I started getting my first missions in the mid-60s. At the time, I thought I had built a promising portfolio of leads. But as I started to pursue them, most of them turned out to be worthless. By 1968, I had run out of goodwill with my handlers at the Kremlin. I was a disgrace, and headed for extraction. Desperate for something, anything to report, I came across a Canadian company moving large shipments of iridium, osmium, rare metals not typically used in mainstream manufacturing. 
The buyer turned out to be a government shell, rerouting the materials to unofficial contractors, one of which turned out to be Archon. Having convinced my superiors that I was onto something, I got a job as a janitor. But I didn't dig up much until you showed up. You were a great distraction, giving me plenty of chances to access off-limits areas. And for a while, I was able to scrounge together enough intel to keep the Kremlin happy. My hunch was correct, but I didn't have the full picture. Not yet. The metals were being used to build something unusual, all right. But I just couldn't piece it together. What I found made no sense. Time travel, doomsday scenarios. If I'd like bad science fiction. For a while, I thought they were on to me, feeding me bogus information. But as time went on, with security tightening around the labs and no one confronting me, I began to suspect that my intel was legit. But time was running out. With Brezhnev and your President Nixon set to negotiate the nuclear disarmament treaty in a few weeks. My superiors were demanding results. My job on the line, I got desperate. I'm careless. And this morning, I got caught. I was tailing an engineer into an off-limits lab when I bumped into Barney from security. Ironically, management chalked up my trespassing to cluelessness and settled for just firing me. Knowing I wouldn't get another chance, I stole a security badge and snuck back in. I just found the time machine operator's manual when you showed up out of nowhere and nearly screwed it all up. Then it clicked. Not only could I steal the technology, it was the perfect getaway, too. Using the manual, I set the destination as high as it would allow. I figured if I could just get far away, I'd have plenty of time to figure out how to get it back to the motherland. But, well, I guess you know the rest. Listen, Joe. I'm really sick, and I'm not making it back. But you still can. The time machine... As a timer, like a toaster, is designed to return home unless the timer's reset. I removed the main power supply fuse to keep it from taking off without me. Here, take it. I have no idea how you got here, and I guess it doesn't matter. Still, despite my mission, a double life, and the deceit, your friendship was always genuine. You're an honest guy, Joe. And I've really enjoyed your company. No, no, please leave me. The pain's coming back. Oh, it hurts to, to talk. Oh, 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 need rest.
can't be. The, the foreign organism. It, it's... It's me. I, I brought back the disease. I'm the one who spreads it. It... It was me. All along. I must have... <laughs> brought it back with me. Oh, God. I think I'm gonna throw up. I, I, I can't deal with this. What do I do? there, man. No offense intended.
to escape it. No way out, no way out, no way out. I'm sorry, what? End of days. Scourge and sickness. The cleansing of the earth. The overlords conspired against us. Tricked us. Made us bring the poison back into the nest. Like good little ants. Who did? Too late. What's done is done. No backsies. But we must try. Do you hear me? I... Uh, sure. The key to salvation. I've seen it. Felt its color. Know its shape. <laughs> they don't know that I know. Oh, no. But I know. I know. Write it. Write it, write it, write it. Before it disappears. Write it down before it disappears. Took away my tools. <laughs> I'll forget without my tools. Your tools? Pens, paper, they're erasing the slate, forcing me to forget, trying to break my resolve. The persistence of memory, I must repeat, 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 all the time, repeat. Oh, they fear me, cower at the sight of scientific rigor. They know I'm close, so they take away my tools. I'll show them. The blinding light of the scientific method casts no shadows. Need paper to reproduce the key. Need the paper. Gotta have paper. My dear, then the sword. The pen, the pen, the pen. My dear, then the sword. The pen, the pen, the pen. Keep it safe. Bring help. Don't get caught. Save the kingdom. Get the girl. Save the kingdom. Get the girl. Save the kingdom. Get the girl.
Um, miss, nurse, I... Oh, hi there. Goodness, <laughs> you startled me. You could have just knocked. And it's doctor, actually, Dr. Emma Brown. I'm a little embarrassed to say, but we don't have any files on you, so I don't even know your name. I... it's Joe, ma'am. Oh, call me Emma. We're not so formal here. It's nice to meet you, Joe. I'm sorry, Dr. Brown. I don't know how to say this, but you, everyone here, is in serious danger. I'm very sick, and it's very important you call the authorities and... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Take it easy. Deep breaths. There's nothing to be afraid of. How do you feel? I... okay, I guess. A little sore. See, you're fine. And the soreness is to be expected. You've undergone muscle therapy. You've been asleep for at least three decades, after all. Maybe even more. What? Where am I? What year is this? Easy, Joe. I know it's a lot to take in. It'd be a shock to anyone's system. Haven't been under for as long as you have. It's 2012. And this is the psychiatric ward at St. Genevieve's Hospital. You were brought out of hibernation five weeks ago. Like the others, you were placed in an artificial coma for regenerative muscle therapy, and brought here for evaluation and rehab after everything checked out. Oh, God. The tubes. You have to listen to me, Doctor. I I'm dangerously sick. I was carrying something when, when, when I got in. I oh, <laughs> that? Well, that's true. You did all have some kind of flu. Actually, the resident physician did find it peculiar how you had all contracted a type of avian flu that only first appeared in the late 90s, and a new strain at that. In any case, the pathogen was largely dormant due to the extended hibernation. We run very thorough medical checks on all our cryo clients, so we gave you all a shot of our regular cocktail. Cleared it right up before you even came to. So it's gone? But, Archon... Yes, I'm afraid I don't know much about all of that. All I know is that the company that froze you went bankrupt back in the early 70s. A victim of industrial sabotage, I think. Anywho, the remaining assets were sold off, and the Cryoform company bought the cryogenics technology. As per ethical requirements, that included all of you who were frozen there. We've been helping rehabilitate Cryoform's clients for the past five years or so. Mostly folks suffering from previously incurable terminal illnesses and heavy wallets. But you didn't hear that from me, hmm? Unfortunately, cryogenics was a little... Mm, experimental when you went under. So, while the company's been freezing and reviving clients for quite some time, you had to stay confined to the original equipment. Apparently, a lot of Archon's original documentation was destroyed in a fire. So Cryoform had practically no information on any of you. That's another reason it took so long to figure out how to revive you. Sadly, the others haven't been quite as coherent. They share certain delusions, you know, end of the world, that sort of thing. An unfortunate side effect of Cryogenic's primitive state at the time, I suspect. You, however, seem just fine. Apart from the shock, I mean. So... so I'm... Not sick? You sure? <laughs> yes, Joe, quite sure. In fact, I see no reason to keep you here. We have an excellent rehabilitation team who'll get you settled into your new life in no time. Just come see me when you're ready to go. So, are we all ready to go? I guess. Oh, don't worry. The rehab team's eager to help get you settled in. I know it may feel a little overwhelming now, but trust me, you'll love it in 2012. Endless opportunities. A whole new lease on life. Speaking of, I happened to catch you on the surveillance monitors a little while ago, and you seem to show excellent problem-solving skills. You like puzzles, Joe? I... Perfect. I'll be sure to mention it to the career coaches. They'll find just the right thing for you.